As a contestant, I feel that I want to thank my mother and my father <laughs> and all those teachers who thought that this China boy from Chinatown can write and then spoiled me with books. And then I got beaten up at recess. <laughs> so it's very dangerous sometimes to be selected and then it's very helpful that later on they're not here and I'm here. Thank you. Um, <clears throat> I just wanted to tell you the story that I just read and um, it has to do with the impulse to care because I think if you come to a place like this because you're writers with writers, most people would say, oh, uh, really? <laughs> that boring, is it? And yet, of course, we know who write, who attempt to write, who read the writing of those who pass that page along to us. What a privilege. Because I know when you first write and you pass your page to anyone, you pretend you're cool. It doesn't really matter. Oh, it's not too good. And in your heart, you're saying it's a goddamn masterpiece. <laughs> And then God does look down and sometimes says, not yet. <laughs> so there's an impulse to care. When you come to a conference like this for people who love writing, love writers, and actually get together to bring us all at once here, it is amazing. Who else would have done it except the hearts of the people that run this, this affair? And it's a love affair. They love you. It's ridiculous, it's absurd, um, but I think writers are lovable because they really think they matter. <laughs> you know, think of it. Why the hell would you put it down on paper hoping it will be read if you didn't think it mattered? So never be humble about that. You don't want to read stuff from people who say it doesn't matter. Just get that over with. So there's an impulse to care, and you're here, and that makes a difference. And I just wanted to read this little story um, by David Wolf, who um, is quoted in this book called uh, Spiritual Literacy. The idea that if you are literate, that you believe in literacy, you are in the spirit of what it means to be human, and to be human with each other. There is a marvelous story of a man who once stood before God, his heart breaking from the pain and injustice in the world. Dear God, he cried out, look at all the suffering, the anguish and distress in your world. Why don't you send help? And God responded, I did send help. I sent you. And so we're together. We don't write in a vacuum, seriously thinking we don't want to be read. We write because something in us says, this may matter not only to you, but to someone else. And you hope you can share it. Now, if you're still in that shy stage where, oh, it's, it's okay, it's another, that, that's fine. We all go through that. And then suddenly somebody accidentally reads your page or hears a sentence from you or meets you here and acknowledge that you are not alone. It truly matters. Do you know what it means to have this many people say, I am coming here, I'm giving my time, I am asked to be here because you matter. That counts. If you don't write from what you think matters in you, you will not write well at all. So think. If you feel you have something you deeply fear, you deeply love, you deeply cherish, you deeply are angry about, write it. Write it for yourself, first of all. Confront it. Write the worst of yourself. Write the best of yourself. Then dare yourself to say, I want someone else to look at this. I want someone else to read this. I want someone else to know I think I count. Otherwise, you wouldn't write. You wouldn't even read. And as they say, there are more and more readers ever now 
reading. Now, some of us think, I didn't hear that. I thought people weren't buying books anymore or they're not going to be carrying this, that. No, no. In numbers of words read every day by ordinary students today, they read 10, 20 times more than we ever did. Because we had to specifically go and get a book, you know, and all this, and now they just have this electronic device. They're actually reading and writing more than any student body have ever done in hundreds of hundreds and hundreds of years and forever. What they don't know is, does it matter? How is it meaningful? And now and then when they read something, because you know, you send stuff that moves you, you send it to other people and other people, and it's so easy for somebody to pick it up from a friend who knows you never read, but here's something neat to read about, and suddenly a tear comes to them because it's a, an anecdote that matters. A parable told by ordinary people who said, this is how I survive today. Well, please note, if you write, Everybody here, if you write, please remember you are a writer. You are in a fraternity of people who, however stupidly humble they may think they are, because if you write, you can't be humble. Something that matters in you says, I want attention. Well, all I'm doing here is saying to you, well, get the attention. Go for it. Try it. Publish it. Share it. The deepest things you write that matter to you, if truly written, and then with craft, because, you know, when you want to tell somebody something, when you want to, to, to be your best to somebody, well, you do the basic thing. You dress yourself in the best way possible. You behave in a way that attracts more people than would, you know, cause them to run away from you. You do these things, even if unconsciously. The shyest person knows how to look away from you, so you have to say, are you okay? It's an instinct in them. They are telling themselves consciously, um, but deeply within them, all of them, all of those who are alone and lonely and feeling that way are saying, say something to me, write something to me. What words will make a difference today? Well, you're all writers. Welcome to the tribe. And you're all people who are publishing every day. You don't have to publish it in words. You smile, you shake someone's hand, you hold their shoulder, you cry with them, you laugh with them, you sneer at them, you do everything that you might do looking at a book, reading what's there in the privacy of your life. You are a book always being written and writing. So I just want to tell you that so that if you have any humility in you, you'll just forget it and start doing the real stuff and start acknowledging that other people have written and they deserve your attention. In other words, when you're in a community of people who care, you're in the world of words that communicate. I'm so glad to be asked to be here because I always think to myself, wow, boring, I'm here again. I hope people can wake up. And then I think, I don't care if you don't wake up. Am I awake? That's what you have to ask. You know, Buddha said, and Buddha, by the way, the, the translation for the word Buddha is to be awakened, the awakened one. And as the great one did say, we are all Buddha. We just have to wake up, all right? And I'm fighting three pills that I'm taking that are putting me to sleep. <laughs> so if I can do this and stand up here and a little shaky, nervous, but so beloved of you in the idea that you share with me what matters. Your words, your ideas, the blessings you have today, and still have many of. Don't be chintzy, share it. Use the words you know, say it, do it. Touch the other. 
I'm 77, I almost died a few times this winter, went through a period of pneumonia, but I have to tell you, I don't want to, your sympathy because the drugs were wonderful. <laughs> I mean, it's ridiculous. I go, oh, I'm almost dying again, I can tell. <laughs> I actually went through this dialogue, right? And uh, of course the Buddha laughed and said, well, we're all dying, you know? And isn't that the, the greatest laugh of all? We still think this moment matters, and it does. We may not know what happens afterwards, but if you don't know what's happening now, it doesn't matter what happens afterwards. And if you know that it matters now, then the rest is gravy, whatever happens. Being with you is a whole lot of gravy. I love rich food, don't stop. And I love the blessing that you bring to yourself and to others when you say, there was a reason for me to be here. I almost didn't make it, or why did I come here at all? Well, you came because you matter. Thank you for that. It means a lot to me.